Welcome back to another video with us here at LMD and STEM Academy. In this video, we will be working through the June 2022 Unit 2, Paper 2. Now we're doing question three, which is a question from module three. And 3A asks us to define each of the following terms and state the unit in which it is measured. So the first term is activity. And activity refers to the number of nuclei decaying per second. And the units of activity is in becquerel or BQ for short. Okay, the second term is the decay constant. And this is the probability of decay of a nucleus per unit time. And so the units is inverse time. So it can be second to the minus one, minutes to the minus one, hours to the minus one, and any unit of time that you can think about in the inverse, right? So one over that, and that's the unit of your decay constant. All right, so half-life now, which is a big one, right? The half-life, this is the average time taken for the number of undecayed nuclei to decrease to half of its initial value. And the units of half-life is gonna be in units of time. So it can be second or minute or hour, okay? So those are our units, those are our definitions. All right, so let's keep it moving. So question three, part B says that iodine-123 is a radioisotope used in diagnostic imaging to detect certain disorders of the thyroid. A sample with an initial activity of 3,000 counts per minute was administered to a patient. After four hours and 20 minutes, the activity decreased to 2,400 counts per minute. Calculate the half-life of iodine-123 in hours, okay? So they're telling us the unit that they want half-life to be in. Okay, so here's our strategy here. The strategy is that we're going to use the decay equation, okay? We're going to use the decay equation to be able to have to find the half-life. And so let's just write the decay equation right here so we know what we're working with. The decay equation says that N is equal to N naught E to the minus lambda, which is your decay constant, times T. Right, so that's our decay equation. And in this particular setup, the N naught, right, that's your initial activity, that's the 3000. So that's your N naught, right? Um, your N would be the 2400 that it got decreased to. So that would be your N. And then you have a time, which is four hours and 20 minutes. Um, no, they want everything to be in hours eventually. So let's convert this time to be exclusively in in hours, right? So what would that be? It would be four hours, and then the 20 minutes would be what? 20 over 60, right? So that would be what? A third of an hour, right? One third of four hours, and then one third hour to add on to that. So that would be what? 4.33 hours. That's our time. So we have everything in hours now, okay? So that's good. So remember now, our strategy is that we're going to use the decay equation, and I've just outlined what everything in the decay equation is represented by in this particular question. And so let's move forward again to see what would be our first step now. Our first step in using this decay equation would be to find the decay constant, which is lambda. Okay? So we're going to find the decay constant, which is this lambda right here. So we're going to find lambda. So I'm going to rearrange this whole equation making lambda the subject, right? And so in, in doing that, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have n. I'm going to bring everything to this side and leave only the lambda over here, right? So I'm going to have n. I'm going to divide by n naught, right, to bring the n naught over here. And so I would be left with e to the negative lambda t, right? To get rid of the e, I'm going to do a ln. So I end up with ln of n over n naught is equal to negative lambda t. All right. No, I only want lambda. So what remains is I'm going to have to bring over the minus sign 
So I'm going to bring over the minus sign and then divide by T, okay? So I'm going to divide all of this by T. So I'm just going to put times one over T, okay? And then with that, I'm left with just my decay constant, which is lambda, right? I'm going to plug in now to find lambda. So follow me up here. Lambda will then be equal to negative ln of n, which we, what did we say n was? 2,400 over n naught. And what did you say n naught was? 3,000. Okay. And then I'm going to multiply that by 1 over my t, my time, which was what? 4.33 hours. Okay. And when I do all of that, and I work that through in my calculator, my lambda comes out to be 0 0.05. And of course, from a, from a unit standpoint, of course, you know, it will be inverse hours, right? Because there was an hour right here, remember? All right, so that's my, that's my decay constant that I found. Now, once I found my decay constant, what am I going to do? Now I'm able to find my half-life, right? So here we go now. I can find my half-life now, right? So let me just bring all of this up a little bit so you can see that word there, okay? So now I need to find my half-life. Now we know that these decay processes, we can just use that the T-half is equal to um, let me write the actual number, 0 0.693 over the decay constant, right? This is an equation that we know for half-life. So because I already found my decay constant lambda, I can just plug that in here, and then I'll be able to get my t-half, my half-life, which was our objective from the outset, okay? So this will be 0 0.693, then divided by 0 0.693. 0, 0.5 over to the minus 1. And so my t half will end up being equal to 13.86 hours. Okay, and so that's my answer. Let me just box that. That is my final answer. So let's just lock that in. Our final answer is this okay t half is equal to 13.86 hours that's the half life for the iodine 123 that's how long it would take for the 3000 to fall to 1500 right to fall to half of its initial value so this is our half life here and so with that we're ready to move on okay so let's just clear everything here and move on so now we're moving on to b part two so B part two says iodine decays by electron capture to tellurium-123, emitting a gamma ray photon of energy 159 kilo electron volts in the process. We're being asked to determine the energy of this photon in joules. Okay, so here's our strategy. The strategy is that the energy of the photon is already given, but it's given in kilo electron volts. And so all we have to do is convert that to joules using the fact that one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So literally, this is just a conversion from ele electron volts to joules. Okay, so let's just write that here. So this is how we have to set it up. It's a one liner really, because it's just a conversion, right? So as I said here already, one electron volt is equivalent to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joule, right? So if we have 100, so if we have 100, if the photon already has an energy of 159 kilo electron volt, right? We're going to find out how much that is in joules. So X is our unknown in joules. But we need to convert this kilo electron volt just to a pure electron volt. So I'm going to multiply through 
by 10 to the 3 here, okay? So I'm going to put 159 times 10 to the 3 electron volts, okay? So I just got rid of this K and converted it to 10 to the 3rd there. And then now that's what I'm going to find. What That is equivalent to in joules, okay? So all we're doing now is just a cross multiplication, right? It's just a cross multiplication. So let me take out this line in the middle so you can see clearly what the cross multiplication is, right? The cross multiplication is that we're trying to find X. So we're going to cross, cross, just a ratio that we're setting up or that we set up here. So then X is going to be equal to, right? 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules times 159 times 10 to the 3 electron volt. And I'm going to divide that by the one electron volt that was over there, okay? So that we have completely isolated from my X, okay? So the electron volt is going to go with that electron volt. And in the end, I'm going to get a value. I'm going to write up here that X is then now going to be equal to 2.54 times 10 to the minus 14 joule. Okay, and that's our answer that we'll be sending up. So let's just lock that in. We're just going to box it and say, this is my answer. This is our answer. Okay, so that is the energy of the photon in joules. It's 2.54 times 10 to the negative 14 joules. Remember, all we were doing here is just a unit conversion. We're converting from kilo electron volt to joules. Okay, and as long as we know the conversion factor, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 9 joules for every one electron volt, then we'll be able to do this without a problem. Okay, all right, so moving right along now. So we're moving to see here so three part c so three part c says while monitoring the decay of iodine 123 count rate readings n were taken at time c and the results recorded in the table below the initial count rate n naught was 3000 counts per minute right so this is the table that we're provided with here's our time in hours ranging from one hour to 10 hours. And then we have a count rate that was measured over the, the course of that, that period there. So at one hour, you know, we had a count rate and then at 10 hours, we had a particular count rate that was measured. So here's what the question is asking now, right? They gave us all this information and these two columns were blank. And so we're asked to complete column three and column four in the table below. So what is column four? Column four is N over N naught. They told us what the N naught was. They told us that N naught was what? 3,000 counts per minute. So all we have to do to fill out column three is to put the N over 3,000, right? So let me just do the first one and then we're gonna advance to, to the filled out table, right? So for N naught, for this first one, it would be 2, 8, 50, divided by the 3000 that was the n naught and that would be what we place in here we would work it out in terms of decimals and put it here and then of course we would do the ln of whatever we got here okay and so that's how you would go through and fill out this table all right so let me just advance to show you the table completely filled out now so here it is right Here's our N over N naught for the entire period here from one hour to 10 hours. And then here's our LN of N over N naught. All right. And so we have that. We've completed our columns. So now we're being asked to plot a graph of LN, N over N naught. So this column versus time. So this should be on our Y axis, right? When we plot our graph, we're going to put that on the Y and we're going to put this on the X. Okay, so that's what we're being asked to plot and then we're being asked to draw the line of best fit through the points. Okay, so here's what my plot turned out to be. Um, Here's my plot. 
So here on my Y, as I said, we have Ellen, N over N naught, and then on our X, we have time. And here's my line of best fit going through all those points, okay? So this is my plot. This is what we were required to do. And in the exam, you would have been plotting this on the paper that they provided. And that paper had a title that said the graph of Ellen, N over N naught versus time. So remember, you'd have, you have to include your title, okay? All right, well, the graph paper would have already had that in the exam, so you'd have been good. So this is our graph here that's required for three part C. And so let's see what else is being asked of us in here. So readings are no longer reliable when, the, when they fall below 2,000 counts per minute. So use the graph in C part two to determine the period of reliability for a sample that is prepared and delivered at a starting count rate of 3,000 minutes, inverse minutes, okay? So they're asking us to say, okay, determine the period of reliability for the sample. So beyond what time period can we not use the graph anymore, right? When will it fall below 2,000 counts per minute? That's what they're asking us to do. And so here's a strategy. The strategy is that we're gonna find ln n over n naught for when n is equal to 2,000 counts per minute, and then we're gonna find the time corresponding to that value on the graph, right? Remember, our graph is of ln n over n naught. So if we're gonna use a graph to do anything, it has to be in this form, okay? And so I'm gonna find ln n over n naught when n is equal to 2,000 counts per minute. So here's how I approach that. So very much so what we did in the table, Right, for n over n naught, I just plug in my n, which is 2,000, when it fall below 2,000, and then the n naught of 3,000. So then when I did that, I came up with a ln n over n naught of being equal to negative 0 0.405, right? So once I got this ln n over n naught, I'm going to go to my graph and find this, right? So let's do that. Go to my graph. And I find that ln n over n naught, it was minus 0 0.405. So I come down here and I'm going to come across to meet the line, my best fit line. And then I'm going to travel up to my x-axis to find the time that corresponds to that particular, right? That particular n over n naught. Okay. And it turns out that that lands squarely on eight hours, right? So what is this saying to us? This is saying that at this point here, right, we know that that's when we would have arrived at the 2,000 um, pounds per minute, right? And that's where they're saying, okay, if you want to fall below here, we can't do anything. We can't. It's not reliable, right? And so what we found here then is that we are gonna, we're going to reach that, that lower limit, right? That lower limit for counter, we're going to get to that at eight hours, so beyond eight hours, we can't we can't use this graph or or any data reliably. And so only here, only in here are the period of reliability. So from zero hours to eight hours, we're good. We can use our graph, we can use our data reliably to find half-life or whatever we need to use the data to do. Anything outside of eight, we can't use because we fall outside of that, that low count rate there, okay? And so that's our answer here. So let me just go back and just tie it all together. All right. So we, we found that, that 2,000 counts per minute coincided with eight hours. And so the period of reliability is from T is equal to zero hours to T is equal to eight hours. Outside of that, we don't have reliable data. We can't use it to do anything, okay? All right. So that's our answer for here. And so let's move ahead. So now we're being asked to state two properties of a radioisotope, which might make it suitable for use in nuclear medicine, giving an example in each case as to why that particular property makes it useful. Okay, so let's move ahead. The first one I have here is that, you know, radioisotopes, some of them, they can emit proton, photons, right? They can emit photons and the emissions can be used for imaging tissues. Remember earlier, we looked at an example um, where we saw that the photon emitted was of a particular energy, right? So when those photons are emitted, they can be used for imaging tissues. And so that property of, of, of photon emission can be used for imaging tissues. So that's a useful property um, for us in some radioisotopes, okay? All right. 
So this, the second one is a short half-life, right? Most the radioisotopes that are used in nuclear medicine generally have a short half-life. And the reason for that is that that ensures that the radioisotope decays away shortly after being used in the body. You don't want a radioisotope that's going to have a long half-life and it's going to build up in the patient's body even long after you've done your imaging and your diagnostics, right? You want it to have a short half-life, so you keep the dosage low and that, that will fade away in short order so that the patient's body will remain free of, of that radioisotope once it's already served its purpose, okay? And so with that, we've come to the end of this question. Definitely give this video a like subscribe to the channel. And if you look on the left here, you'll see the next video up. And if you look on the right, you will see our module three playlist where you'll find tons more interesting content that will be helpful in getting you ready for this exam, okay? So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.